The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 132. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today we have one of my all-time favorite authors, or at least one of my all-time favorite books and, and author as well, but MJ DeMarco, who is the author of The Millionaire Fast Lane. One of the books that I would accredit to, to me learning the, the millionaire mindset or the entrepreneur's mindset, what it takes, uh, the difference between you know the attitude. Sometimes you hear attitude is you know 98% and technique is 2%. And, and if you get a chance to read this book, uh, I think one of the things that related to me the most was MJ talks to the reader in this book. Like I talk to myself in my head. I'm very direct. I'm very simple, uh, straightforward and kind of skip some of the fluff. And uh, some people might get uh, a little offended by by that kind of writing, but I absolutely love it because I know that the books that make you think, the ones that kind of jab you in the ribs and, and are showing you things that you're not maybe doing the best are actually the ones that help us grow the most. And this was one of these books for me. So without further ado, let's bring on MJ. Welcome MJ. And thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We take just a moment before we take a deep dive into your book and introduce yourself. Tell us just a little bit about you personally. Sure. Uh, I started a uh, internet company, uh, uh, way back in, um, Oh God, it, probably uh, late 90s, uh, 99, um, founded it uh, with uh, about 900 bucks, uh, no internet training, no formal, uh, you know, I didn't have a computer science degree, nothing like that, self-funded it. I was able to sell it uh, a couple of years later during that big, you know, the internet boom. Um, and uh, that pretty much, just like everyone else during that time, uh, the company that bought the company, uh, folded and I was able to get it back, buy it back at a, a fire sale price. Um, held the company for another six, seven years. Again, sold it again uh, in 2007. Uh, and during this time that I owned the company, I was able to cash flow it uh, six figures monthly, profit every single month. Uh, sold it a multi million dollar valuation. Um, so in 2007, I after selling the business, I went on a little hiatus, uh, a semi-retirement hiatus, and it was my one of my goals um, was to write a book about um, all the trials and tribulations of entrepreneurship that I have found and discovered over the last uh, you know 10, 12 years. And so this book was pretty much a self-published venture for me to say, you know what? If I was 20 years old or if I was getting started again, uh, young and dumb, what would I like to have known? What would I have, you know, what kind of wisdom would I want imparted on me? Uh, so that's how the, the book really came to came to pass. And it was took me about three years to write it. And it has done phenomenally well, considering, you know, the title is somewhat um, a lot of people have said, oh, it sounds get rich quickie. And. You know that's something I learned in hindsight, right there. But since then, I, you know, I've sold over a hundred thousand copies, um, sold over a million dollars worth of this this book, and it was released in 2011, and it's done just fantastically well because people have continued to recommend it. And again, that's despite uh, the the somewhat you know sketchy title. That's excellent, MJ. We've actually you know we ask every author, so we'll be asking you today later. But we ask uh, each author of the you know 130 plus interviews that we've done, and and yours actually has been mentioned a couple different times um, when we've asked them, hey, what's that? What's a a life impacting, paradigm shifting book that you've read? And mm -hmm. uh, and yours has come up a couple of times when you say it's been recommended. It's been recommended by some some big name authors um, that have come on as well. So that's that's amazing. And thank you for sharing that. And sure. uh, now let's do that. Let's jump into the book, The Millionaire Fast Lane, which was first made available for purchase back in uh, 2011. And MJ, we're going to move quickly, but we're here mm -hmm. to cover the top questions that our listener slash future reader would like to get answered. And uh, the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing The Millionaire Fast Lane? Uh, well, the inspiration was I was uh, leading a fantastic, fabulous life, um, abundant uh, wealth. Uh, you know, I owned Lamborghinis at a big, you know, big house. And and when I reflect upon that, it was all due 
to entrepreneurship. It wasn't due to the, to the traditional song and dance that you see from the mainstream media. And, you know, that song and dance from the mainstream media is, well, you know, uh, save 10 percent of your paycheck you know, invest in mutual funds in the stock market and your 401k. And man, when you're 65 years old, you're just going to have millions and then you can retire. Well, I retired in my mid thirties and it had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with those strategies that everyone else has been told to follow their entire life. And the fast lane is how to bring about that type of scenario. Uh, it's something what I call as a leveraged entrepreneurship where you can actually scale a business, you know, not to make a few thousand dollars a month, but to make five, six figures a month. And then when you do that, five, six figures a month, you'll find yourself saying, stock market, what do I need the stock market for? And you don't need the stock market to uh, you know, to wait around fifty years to make it you a millionaire. If you're making five, six figures a month, as it, as a lot of entrepreneurs do now, especially now with the way uh, things have grown with uh, you know on the internet and apps and whatnot. But you know, you're making five, six figures a month. You become a millionaire in just a couple of years. Not this. Oh God, you know the the S and P has to give me eight percent, and then it's going to happen. So that was one of the uh, main things about. Um, the book I wanted to convey, I mean, it technically is an entrepreneur book, but it's really a book about life, about, you know, not falling into this conformist, this doctrine that they want you to believe. And you have to do this for 50 years and you have to, you have to put your faith in what I call hope in time, you know, hope the stock market gives me 8%, hope I have a job, hope I can save that hundred dollars a month and penny pinch my life away. Just so, you know, when you're 60 years old, then you can finally enjoy life. So, uh, the book is kind of a mixture of that. And it, it explains the different roads to wealth, which, uh, usually the uh, 90% of the world subscribes to, and then it goes into the leveraged entrepreneurship aspect of it, which covers various commandments that can help you uh, create that kind of entrepreneurial process that could actually not only change your life, but change generations of your life. So, Jay, we were talking beforehand how many books come out that are geared towards uh, entrepreneurs every single month. And I want to give you an opportunity to really uh, you know, differentiate or separate yours from the crowd. So what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, I, I think a lot of uh, authors and I, and I think of the publishing industry uh, pushes this is they focus on one type of concept and that concept may be valid for six months, may be valid for a couple of years. And they'll, they'll talk about the top, they'll talk about, you know, this particular concept for an entire book. Well, my book, I feel contains the entire picture. It contains the entire, what I would say, the roadmap. And, you know, I was telling you, I was writing another book um, since the popularity of this one was so, it's done so well. I, I, I'm not going to write a book unless I feel it can change somebody's life. And I'm not one of these people who will take one concept and then write an entire book about it. My book will, my book and my future book will have concepts in it that you can write entire books about. I mean, there'll be 50, 60 concepts in there that people can write con entire books about it. I'm more of a big picture person. I want to write things and, and concepts and, and big picture ideas that when someone puts the book down, they say, holy crap, that was awesome. And I, I feel a paradigm shift. I hate to use that word, but uh, that's what I write for. I don't write to, you know, turn the light on for one thing that might be valid for a couple weeks or a couple months. Is there a word you say you don't like that word paradigm shift? Is there a is there a different thing that you like to say when you're talking about uh, something that you read that just completely kind of changes the landscape or what you maybe used to believe? Well, it, well, really, it, it's a lifestyle shift. Lifestyle shift, okay. And it's and it's you know uh, like I told you, uh, I run a forum, and the forum gets you know thousands of entrepreneurs and wannabe entrepreneurs coming to it, and I can always tell. You know, within moments, if this person has what it takes or they don't have what it takes, and you can tell because by the language they use, and oh, I'm going to try this. Well, it's not mm -hmm. something you try; it's a lifestyle. It's like, oh, I'm going to try this diet. Well, you're probably going to fail because diets are temporary. This isn't a diet. This isn't something you try. It's something you live. 
That's huge. And MJ, how did you design the book or how would you suggest the reader engage with the book? Is this one that they can jump in and jump out, you know, kind of cherry picking information as needed, or did you really design it to be read from front to back? Uh, well, I, I, car- I wrote it with a big picture format. Um, and I get emails practically every week saying, you know, you've kept me up the last three nights and I and haven't been able to put it down. <laughs> so I, I think I've done an effective job at that. But I, I'm trying to paint a whole picture where when someone puts it down, they actually feel something has changed and they feel their odds and probabilities of uh, succeeding in entrepreneurship have doubled, tripled or quadrupled. So MJ, now, all right, now that we know the, the purpose behind the book um, and you're giving us some of the background, let's take a deep dive into the content itself. And the, the best way I like to preface this is almost if you're sitting down with one of your, your your best buddies and they haven't read your book yet and they want to know what it's all about and you have five to eight minutes to really kind of give them uh, a clue. So it's not too little, but it's also not too much where they feel like they don't have to read it. So can you can you take a deep dive with us into your book? Sure. And uh, basically, the, the, the book is sliced into three different uh, phases. And uh, those three phases are what I call the roadmaps to wealth. And I classify those as three different roadmaps. One is the sidewalk roadmap. One is the slow lane roadmap. And the other is the fast lane roadmap. And the, probably the front half of the book covers the sidewalk and the slow lane. And really, these two roadmaps are more about what you shouldn't be doing versus what you should be doing. And I think a lot of success is not, not you know, what, what do I need to do? It's really what you need to stop doing as opposed to what you need to start doing. And the first uh, roadmap is the sidewalk, which I would say pretty much, I don't know, 80% of the, of the world or the country falls into this mindset. The sidewalk is pretty much a paycheck to paycheck mindset. It's a, it's a consumer mindset where everything you earn, and it doesn't matter what you earn, just everything you earn goes to buy something, you know, something, uh, the new iPhone, a new car, a new this. You're constantly competing with the Joneses. You don't really save money. It's just a, a it's, you're always operating at the ledge or the, at the cliff side of something. And as soon as something perilous happens in your life, you're like, uh, you know, minutes from bankruptcy or, or you're underwater, you can't pay your bills. And sadly, that's how the majority of uh, people live. And the interesting thing about the sidewalk is, is, is it doesn't matter what you make. I mean, there are people who are making five, six figures a month that are still on the sidewalk. And that the, the common denominator there is what you spend, what you earn, is what you spend. This is why when you see a um, you know a famous athlete who you know retired and two years later they're bankrupt. Or I just read a story about Antoine Walker. Uh, I think he was a Celtics basket, basketball player, made $110 million over the course of his career. And I think three, four years after retirement, he's already bankrupt. Right? And that's because he's been living on the sidewalk. He's been living a consumer mindset. And that is what anchors uh, the sidewalk. Uh, the slow lane is the other roadmap. And that's uh, a little bit, I, I kind of went in that already with the idea that it's a what I call a miserly mindset or a frugal mindset that, oh, gee, you know, if I just skimp and save for the next 50 years and and I trust the stock market, I trust my financial advisor, I trust hope and I trust time. And I just, you know, I, I, I'm re- I ridiculously, you know, I'm going to go behind the Trader Joe's and, and buy up, uh, steal up some expired meat and save money on that. And I'm going to uh, go to shop at Walmart and everything's going to be savings and savings and and I'm going to trust that the stock market will someday make me rich. That's pretty much what the slow lane is. And then that roadmap is buttressed by, you know, trillion dollar financial empires who want you to believe that, you know, you can trust the stock market. It's a great wealth accelerator. And, you know, their argument there is, of course, compound interest. And, yeah, compound interest is very powerful, but it's not powerful when you're applying it to 100 bucks or, you know, which is typically what people do because they are trading their time for money. And that's the linchpin of the slow lane is this time trade. You're trading time for money. You're trading pieces of your life for money in hopes to be free later. It's like 
the analogy I like to use is you're like snipping parts of your body and saving them for later and hoping to reclaim them later so you can uh, enjoy that freedom later. It's like, why would you want to sacrifice your your today for tomorrow? It just doesn't make sense. So the slow lane, again, is anchored by a job usually in a time trade. And the fast lane is what I discussed uh, er uh, earlier, which is leveraged entrepreneurship. And leveraged entrepreneurship is the ability to get into a business that is either that is product centered, and product centered means something that people share, people recommend. And a good example is is my book. I'm, I mean, I've sold over a hundred thousand copies, and that's not because of my marketing prowess. That's not because I threw a ton of money at it. That's because people have recommended it over and over and over again. That's the power of being product-centered. Another product-centered element is legacy, something I call um, creation and innovation. When you create legacy, that means you are creating something that exists in time separate from time. So as I'm speaking on this uh, podcast, this podcast will exist long after I've done the interview. So that's that's what I call legacy. And then, of course, uh, the book itself is legacy. The book has been out for three years. I've made thousands of dollars from the book. That is, again, legacy. When I owned an internet company for the 10 years, that was a company that existed in time. It worked 24-7. And that's the power of leveraged entrepreneurship and legacy is that it just it, it creates a divorce from you, for, of your time, from the old slow lane mentality, it was well. I have to go to work if I if I have to, you know, earn money. So, in a nutshell, basically, the front half of the book covers the sidewalk and the slow lane. Why those strategies don't work goes in depth, really in depth with the mathematics behind it. Um, you know, counteracts the old compound interest argument, which which again I know is powerful, but you know what? Compound uh, inflation is also very powerful. So. And then the back half goes into the leveraged entrepreneurship aspect. And leveraged entrepreneurship is best handled when it covers uh, three main, or excuse me, five main commandments, which are need, entry, control, scale, and time. Basically, that's the litmus test for any business you're going to start if you want it to change your life, if you want it to be leveraged entrepreneurship, and you have to follow the commandment of need, entry, control, scale, and time. And that is the back half of the book. So MJ, you just went through, and first of all, you did a fantastic job of taking us through your book. And you just went through a ton of, of valuable content and context along with it. So this next question I feel like is somewhat difficult. And I'm asking for you to almost wrap that all up. And I'm asking if the reader can only take away one concept, principle, or action item, out of your entire book, everything you just took the time to discuss with us, what would you want that to be? Uh, um, be value-driven, uh, value-driven to the masses. Mm -hmm. And the, the phrase I use in my book is, uh, if you want to make millions, you need to start impacting millions. You need to touch millions. And you need to do that with value. Again, that comes back to being product-centered. Uh, again, I, I interact with a lot of wannabe entrepreneurs, and most of them aren't value driven; they're money driven. I want to be my own boss. I want a Ferrari. I I want to make you know. I, just today on my forum, there's I think three or four threads. I'm going to make a billion dollars in the next, uh, you know, a year or whatever. That's a money focus. That's a what I call a chase strategy. Chase strategies and entrepreneurs that follow them usually do not succeed. And a track strategy is a value strategy where you create value. That is the essence of entrepreneurship is creating value, solving problems and creating a product centered business that through it without even advertising, you will still be growing by virtue of the product's power. <laughs> so there's a couple of quotes I could have pulled out of what you just said. And, and uh, that's actually my next question as well. Do you have a favorite quote from your book? Something that you wrote um, that you really love, or maybe it's, maybe it's something that's resonated the most with your audience. Uh, I think, I think two, or, uh, it's not two, it's a dichotomy that I think shocked me that a lot of people have commented on, which I didn't expect people. I didn't think it would resonate with people is as a fast laner, you are a, you carry a producer mindset. 
And the the majority of people on the sidewalk carry a consumer mindset. So you have to look at is what team are you playing for? Most people play on team consumer. I mean, I I had uh, dozens of people on my forum just just cheering uh, because they were making hand over fist on Black Monday. And that's and that's the mentality. We have a consumer culture, and here on my forum, I got people who are just just jumping up and down because they're not engaged in that consumer culture. They're making money hand over fist because they carry a producer mindset, and the fast lane is a producer mindset. A sidewalk is a consumer mindset, and the slow lane is a scarcity mindset. That's excellent. There's there's so I, I'm I'm going back and looking at my highlights and my my. Uh what I've uh, underlined in your book. And there's so many, again, I, I, I appreciate simplicity and I, and I appreciate directness and not fluff. And there's so many great things that you've written in this book. I'm just, I'm going through some of them. Wealth is a process, not an event. Um, there's, there's so things like that that just make me think and, and kind of, you know, make sure that the focus is on the right thing. Mm-hmm. There's so many, I mean, it, you know, that's technically a one liner. It's, it's kind of a half liner, but extremely, extremely powerful, uh, information all throughout your book. So thank you for sharing that. And sure. If there was only one book you could recommend to our listeners based on the way it's impacted your life. And, and I'm going to change, you know, sometimes I use that word paradigm shift, but the way it created a lifestyle shift for you, what book would you recommend? Um, you know, I, there hasn't been many for me and that's, and again, that comes to why I wrote this book because I, f- I felt there was a lot of missing, um, you know, there was, there was missing, I don't know what to call them, just books that just change your life, uh, you know, from a macro perspective. Uh, and that's kind of why I wrote it. But, uh, from a micro process perspective, there was the, probably two books would be, uh, that one thing by, uh, Gary, Gary oh. Keller, I think it is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, just to focus on one thing, remove distractions and the old, the old domino theory. And the other one is, uh, Good old Hal Elrod's uh, Miracle Morning and getting up in the morning, which I can tell you, if some if some book can get me up before seven o'clock, man, that book has worked magic because I am a. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. I didn't want to get up in the morning, but uh, the Miracle Morning uh, by uh, Hal Elrod was a uh, another uh, life altering book. One of one of my favorite all time books. We had him on. Um, I don't know how many episodes ago, and and I was like, I, you know, I got to check this out. I got to see what this is all about. Read it, implemented it, and uh, and and not only that, but seen so many other people, um, even in the podcasting realm and blogging realm, that have gotten into it. Uh, people like Pat Flynn that have read it, and and it's cool to see people talking about how much it changed their life. And some of this stuff is just simple techniques, and then the mm-hmm. kind of the mind frame behind it. What a, what a what a powerful book! I'm not sure if he knew how how big that book was going to be, but um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of what, what you would even call you know fast lane individuals that really yeah. really love that book. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and it, it's a it's hard to explain until you experience it, especially coming from someone who's a, a perennial late <laughs> late night owl. <laughs> So MJ, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get not only more information on you, but also on your book, The Millionaire Fast Lane? Sure. Uh, the, the book is available at Amazon and, uh, you know, it's titled The Millionaire Fast Lane. I know that sounds kind of get rich quickie and I, I, I apologize for that, but there's like over, I think there's over 600 reviews on it now. Um, if you want to take a look at what it's all about, I also run the Fast Lane Forum now in my spare time. Uh, that's an entrepreneur forum that features real entrepreneurship. We don't discuss, um, you know, MLMs. We don't discuss a lot of franchising. We discuss actual innovation, creation kind of things. And um, I can be reached there pretty much every single day. I am there frequently. That's where I interact with uh, my my uh, readers. So, and uh, again, the, uh, the book's been out for three years. So uh, take a look at it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, MJ, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your book with us. Thanks. I appreciate you uh, having me. Thanks again for listening in today. I hope you absolutely love that interview and I hope you ha- you have an opportunity to pick up his book uh, at some point in your entrepreneurial uh, path and, and I think it will help out big time. So if you want more information on MJ or the book, uh, The Millionaire Fast Lane, check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. 
And as always, if you want a chance to win that book, uh, become a VIP. I believe all you have to do is uh, click become a VIP on the, on the homepage of the elpodcast.com. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. And then you'll be entered not only in a drawing to win that book, but every book um, uh, past episode 100 and that we do further on. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.